Oh, hey. Hey, everybody. What's up? Welcome to the VS Code live stream. Today is Tuesday, August the 10th, and today is the live stream release party. We've got a new release of VS Code out. It's 1.5.9 in case you're keeping track for those of you <laughs> counting releases out there. And we've got some cool features in this release that we're going to show you today and some great demos. Uh, before we get started, a few reminders. This is going to last about 30 minutes-ish. So if you're on Learn TV, you're going to get cut off at the heart at the top of the hour, uh, bottom of the hour, excuse me. Uh, you can go over to YouTube. We'll continue the stream there. We'll try to keep it right at 30 minutes, though. Um, let's see. For those of you on YouTube, you're already in the right place to click the subscribe button. So uh, why don't you do that? So subscribe to us on YouTube. We'd love to hang out with you there. We've been posting a lot of YouTube shorts. Uh, I know that if you've discovered YouTube shorts, you've probably also discovered that this is a great place to lose hours of your life. And we just want to help you lose more hours of your life. So engage with us there. We'd love to see you. Uh, TikTok.com slash at VS Code. We're on TikTok as well. That's right. And uh, if you're watching the shorts, you're getting the same content on TikTok. But hey, why not? see it in two places. Two places is better than one. And we'd love to see you there too. Uh, and then one last thing, we do live streams at least once a week, sometimes twice a week. And so when if you want to find out when those are, head over to code.visualstudio.com slash live stream. The URL there, did we get it up? Yep, there it is right there. Cool. And uh, you'll know exactly what we're doing. And then I forgot, we do also have a meetup group. Uh, for those of you on meetup.com, which is a great way to keep up with all of the things that we're doing. Okay, so we're literally everywhere. We're YouTube, we're TikTok, we're uh, live stream site, we're at meetup. Uh, you know, take your pick, your favorite place. It's all good. Okay, so all of that out of the way, let's get right into the 1.5.1.59 release party today, August 10th. We've got some great demos for you. Uh, the first one is from Andrea, who's going to talk about live preview. So I want to welcome Andrea up for her demo. What's up, Andrea? I'm doing well. How about you? Doing very well myself. What is live preview and what are we looking at today? Yeah, so live preview is a VS Code extension that allows you to uh, preview your HTML web projects. And essentially what it does is it hosts a server at the workspace root, and then um, it gives you different options for previewing them. So yeah, so I'll just go into the demo right now. So you can see that I have an HTML file here and I wanna know what that looks like. So then um, I click this button in the top right corner um, from the live preview extension and then I can see my page. Um, you can get the same thing. Um, if you wanna go through the Explorer, you can always just right click and also just click the show preview here um, and that does the same thing. Um, but What's kind of cool about this is if you want to edit something, maybe I don't want to call this my page, maybe I want to call it about me, you can see that it um, refreshes in real time. Um, and if you don't want it to refresh as much, you can always just go into the settings for live preview and change this auto refresh preview to be on saved files, but I'm just going to leave it as it is right now. So um, this is just like a mini browser in your editor. You can go to the different pages and you can even use back forth and um, we even have find. So if you use control F or you can go here, say find in page, then um, you can search just as you would in a regular browser. Um, but yeah, another cool thing with the embedded browser is we have our own console. Uh, so what you can do is you can just um, pop up the output console and then um, go to this menu here uh, and go embedded live preview console, click on that. And um, I have another page here that does a console log. So um, you can just, so um, when I click this button, essentially what it does is it logs what's in this box. You can kind of see I have a function here that says ask the following question and then it logs what's in the text area. So maybe I'll say, hi, what's up? And then send. And then you can see that it'll um, show in the log here. So that's pretty handy for debugging. And um, also if you want the whole dev tools, um, you can open the web view dev tools just by clicking here. 
Uh, so you can see the console here. It's a little bit messier just because it's for um, the editor itself. Um, but you can see my um, you can see my log here, and also you can even look at network traffic and such. So that's pretty handy. And another thing that I wanted to show is the live preview task. So um, what you can do is you can go run task like you would um, with a regular task, and then there's this live preview run server. Um, so you can see here, um, this actually logs the server traffic. So um, if I go to multiple pages, you can see that it shows what the server is serving. And if you want to see what these files actually are, you can control click and it will show up in the editor. Um, so that's pretty fun. And um, another thing is, if you're not a big fan of this embedded um, preview, maybe it takes up too much editor space, um, you can always pop up um, a preview on um, your own um, default browser. So you can click open in browser here, um, or alternatively, what you can do is you can focus on your HTML file, and then you can say uh, this one, um, live preview, show preview. Oh, that opened up on my other browser, just one second. But yeah, uh, you could see that there is a preview here. It has the same refreshing features as you would with the embedded preview. And you can see um, kind of in the background, if I go from page to page, the same server is serving it. So then you can see that we ha still have the server logging task working. So yeah, that's fun and all. And um, the last thing that I kind of want to demo is the debugging. Uh, so what's kind of, cool with this is that uh, the default JavaScript debugger that ships with VS Code um, actually is able to um, attach to an instance of live preview. Uh, so I'm just going to demo that. Um, it'll have a lot of the same features um, as if you're just using the JS debugger by itself, but um, I'll just show it anyways. So um, what you'll want to do is you'll want to do a live preview, show debug preview, external browser, and it will launch the external browser here. I'll just, uh, I'll just, uh, there. So uh, you can see that I have my preview here popped up in the external browser, and um, I, and um, what I have here is a button uh, that when I click it, it will choose a random response out of these four, and then it will print the result to the screen. And I actually have a breakpoint here, so it should actually hit the breakpoint when I click this. So you can see here that um, the random index that it generated uh, was zero, so then it should pick the first response, the bunny waves back. And you can even go into the global variables for the script. And you can see here, I'll just, you can see that the number of waves is at 18. Um, so if you didn't notice earlier, it was actually increasing every second or every half second, um, but it was increasing. And um, you can see it's at 18, and it says 18 here, which matches. Um, and if you want to change that, maybe you want it to reset, then you can set it to whatever value you want. And um, when, I press when I press play, then it should reset back to zero. And you should see um, the first response um, print to the page. So say here, the bunny waves back, and um, it reset to zero, and it started um, increasing again. So um, yeah, it's really useful to see the variables there from the JS debugger. Um, another useful thing from the debugger is that you can um, pop up the Edge Dev Tools um, from the Edge Dev Tools extension. So um, what I did is I clicked this, and then I have um, I have the Dev Tools here. So um, maybe I want to inspect some elements. So I'll go into here, and then um, yeah, I can even I can even edit things as you would with the regular Dev Tools in your browser. And yeah, that's what you have. So uh, that's all that I wanted to demo today. Um, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Um, but yeah, that's live preview.
Brooke, I think you're muted. <laughs> Brooke, are you muted? Have I been talking that whole time? Yeah, I was, yeah. I was telling my life story. Oh, no. I have to start from the beginning. So yeah. my earliest memory, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I love this extension so much. This is so, it's so great. I used it yesterday uh, on a YouTube short. And one of the things that I really like about it is that I had a bunch of different HTML pages I was clicking through. And as you click through, it just updates, right? So it just sort of follows you, which is so nice. We did have a question here. Is this feature built in, Andrea, or is this an extension? And if it's an extension, can you show which one it is? Yeah, so it is an extension, it is not built in. Um, I can just show it in the marketplace here. Uh, so let's see, live And preview. we'll put up a link for people so they can get directly there. Yeah, um, you can actually just use aka.ms um, slash uh, live dash preview uh, to get to it. But this is uh, what it is, it's called live preview. It's from Microsoft and yeah, it's. Um, we'll put up a link for it. Now, uh, another question we had was, can I can I also use it in Chromium? Um, I assume that the, I mean, I guess, how does the live preview work? What browser is it using? Does it work with all browsers? Yeah, yeah, so it should use, it should work with Chromium um, with the external browser. So with um, the internal browser, it just, it's a web view with an iframe in the inside and the, um, some other things kind of working to make it work. Um, so if the question is regarding whether Chromium works with the external preview and also the debugger, it should work. Awesome. Well, I also wanted to point out that I also play the guitar badly and <laughs> I am also usually tired. So we, we have those things in common. Thank you so much, Andrea, for being with us today. Everybody, go get that live preview extension. It's one of my favorites. I go to it all the time. It's become one of my go-to extensions. So thank you for making it, Andrea. Yes, thank you for having me to demo. All right, moving right along. It's 1.5.9 and you know, it, no, not 5.9, it's 1.59 and you know what that means. That means C++. I don't know why it means that, but it does. Okay, so I'd like to welcome Julia uh, to the live stream to talk about C++ and uh, disassembly. And I'm gonna be honest and say that I took C++ in college and all I remember about C++ is pointer to a pointer to a pointer. That's, it. That's <laughs> all I got. I didn't retain anything else. Hey, Julia. Hi, thanks, thank you for being. Thank you for being with us. What do we have in the land of C++ today? So today I'm going to demo the new disassembly view in VS Code, which I'm really excited about because this has been our number one upvoted issue on GitHub uh, for the C++ extension for a few years now. <laughs> so we finally have released uh, like an early version of it, a preview version. There's definitely more coming in this space. Um, so yeah, I'm pumped. Awesome, let's see it. And a fun fact for our uh, viewers who don't use C++, C++ is a very highly used language inside of VS Code. We have a lot of people writing C++ in VS Code. so. That's awesome. Let's get right into it, Julia. Cool. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, this has been our number one upvoted issue on GitHub for a long time now. You can see we have over 400 upvotes plus a bunch of other types of reactions. Um, and for those who don't know, um, for the C++ extension, if you are using it and you run into any issues or have feature requests, GitHub is where we look uh, for customer feedback. So if you like start using uh, disassembly view or any of the other features in the C++ extension after today, um, you can head over to our GitHub repo, which is VS Code hyphen CPP tools and um, open an issue there if you have any feedback for us. So before I dive into the demo of the new disassembly view, I wanna take some time to, under to explain what disassembly view is and why it's helpful. And to do that, it's important to understand how a C++ program is made. So you start with your C++ source code. This is the code that you write in your .cpp files, such as your hello world uh, function, for example. And then you use a C++ compiler of your choice to compile that source code into something called assembly code. And that assembly code is then assembled using an assembler into machine code. So basically, 
this process is turning the code that you write as a C++ developer into something that the machine can understand. And finally, you can use a linker to turn that machine code into an executable, which is something that you can then uh, run for running your program. So machine code is, as you can see, pretty hard to understand. It's represented in binary, so either a bunch of ones and zeros, or in hex, which looks something like what you're seeing on this slide. Assembly code is a bit more readable by humans. Um, you can definitely learn how to read it and understand it. And you can turn machine code into assembly code using something called a disassembler. So if you have your machine code, if you have your binary, um, you can use a debugger to disassemble that into assembly code, which is something that you might be able to understand more as a human, not a machine. <laughs> And the disassembly view that uh, is now available in VS Code lets you look at the assembly code and the machine code behind your program. So why would you want to be looking at this stuff if you can just look at the source code that you've written? Uh, there are a few reasons. So one is that just looking at the assembly language helps you understand exactly what the compiler is doing. And that might explain some unexpected behavior. Sometimes different compilers will make different optimizations to your code when it's compiling it. And that might change the behavior in a way that you don't necessarily understand. And it'd be hard to figure out what those optimizations are and what changes are being made without looking at the assembly language itself. Another scenario might be if you upgrade your compiler and there was a change in that uh, upgraded compiler version that is producing different behavior with your program. Um, in order to understand like what the change is between the newer version of the compiler and the older version of the compiler and what they're doing differently, um, you would need to look at the assembly, uh, the disassembly view to look at the assembly language and machine language to figure out what the difference is between those two versions. Um, and then also, Assembly language is helpful to understand how data is represented in memory. Uh, so that's a brief intro into disassembly view and how a C++ program is made for those who are unfamiliar with the process. And now we can dive into the actual demo. So I have VS Code open on my Windows laptop right now. And I also have my main.cpp file open, but first I just want to call out that in order to use the disassembly view with a C++ program, you'll need to install the C++ extension. Disassembly view is available in VS Code for all extensions, um, as long as the extensions enable support for it. And the C++ extension is one of the first first party extensions to enable support for disassembly view. And you, you can install the C++ extension uh, from the marketplace tab in VS Code. Okay, so. Here, open a file explorer. Okay, so here's my project. I just have a simple main.cpp file that prints hello C++ world from VS Code. Uh, so to open disassembly view, the first thing you're gonna need to do is start a debugging session. So you can do that by selecting run, start debugging, or by just hitting F5, and then you'll select your environment. I'm on Windows and I'm using MSVC, um, so I'll select this uh, cl.exe configuration. And this starts the debugger. Here we go. We just rearrange these windows a bit. Okay, cool. Um, and I already had a breakpoint set at line 13 here, so I hit my breakpoint. And now to open disassembly view, you can right click on your source code, scroll down, select open disassembly view. And then I recommend uh, splitting the screen using this uh, button in the top right corner so that you can look at your source code and the disassembly view side by side. So what do we have going on in this disassembly view? Uh, in this left column, you see a bunch of memory addresses. So each line in the disassembly view corresponds to an instruction. And the memory address in the left column tells you uh, the memory address at which each instruction is stored. And then in the middle column, we see that uh, machine code in hex, similar to what I was showing you on that uh, first slide. And then in the right column, we see the assembly code. And you can uh, navigate through instructions in disassembly view the same way you would in a 
a typical debug session when you're just navigating through your source code. You can even set breakpoints in disassembly view. So yeah, if I keep hitting the debugger, it'll stop at my next breakpoint. And we see we have the debug uh, pane UI here on the left. The breakpoints will show up here in this uh, breakpoint corner. And yeah, you can you know, disable your breakpoints in your source code, continue running your program. You can step into instructions, step out. Um, basically the same uh, actions that you can take when you're debugging just your source code, you can do that in the disassembly view as well. So I'll go ahead and stop my debug session. And yeah, that's all that I have to demo for disassembly view today. Um, I mentioned in the very beginning of this uh, demo that this is like the early preview release of this feature. And it's a space that we're really excited about. So there's definitely going to be more development coming in this area. So definitely uh, keep your eyes out and pay attention to this area if you are interested in it. Um, and we would love to hear all feedback if people um, are using a disassembly view today. Awesome. Thank you so much, Julia. We've got some great questions that came in. Uh, I want to cover a couple of them. Here's one that came in that I thought was pretty great uh, from Solos. It says, it's, the question is just, can you break it down with Python? I don't know what that has to do with C++, but I think the answer is yes. We always break it down with Python. So <laughs> absolutely, we can break it down with Python. Uh, another one came in from uh, Magma Stuff who said, this is a great one. Can I run Borlin C++ on VS Code? I've been trying it for, I, I think it says a decade now, and I'm old without any solution. <laughs> can, can you please help Magma who's trying to run Borland on C++ or Borland C++ on VS Code? Um, sorry, was that Borland C++? Uh, yeah, the, I think it's the compiler. I'm sorry, I'm out of my depth. Got it, I got anything. it. No, 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 you're good. You're good. Um, I'm honestly not sure about that compiler specifically, but I will definitely test that out and I can like comment back on this uh, video with a response. Yeah, you got to help Magma. They're they're old now without any solution. And so <laughs> I like that. Sorry, I like Magma. Today. Yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Uh, Glenn42A, uh, let's see, is asking, is this... All, uh, AT and T or Intel assembly by default. So the assembly that you see here is produced by um, disassembling the binary, which uses whichever debugger you have installed on your machine. So if you like, I was using MSVC, and so then this was using the MSVC debugger to disassemble the binary, and that's how it produces that uh, assembly language that you're seeing. So if you were using like GDB, for example, then it would use that. So what you see here is a result of the debugger you have on your computer and then disassembling the binary rather than like, if you, there are times where you can compile your C++ code and specify to your compiler to output an assembly language file while it's compiling, that would be, those results would likely be different than what you're seeing by disassembling the, the binary. Um, so I think that like, to answer this question, the type of assembly you're seeing just depends on like the debugger that you're using to disassemble. Well, very interesting. Um, I didn't know that AT&T had anything to do with the C++. I thought it was all cell phones and DSL. So that's what I learned from that comment there. Well, thank you so much for being <laughs> with us, Julia. Uh, everybody check out the new C++. Uh, that's an extension, correct? Are we using extension or is this built in? Uh, so the C++ is an extension and that will give you C++ IntelliSense and debug support. Uh, disassembly view is something that's built into VS Code, but then each extension kind of like powers disassembly view for their workflows. So the extensions need to enable support for disassembly view. Okay, well, that's awesome. Grab the C++ extension, uh, build an operating system. You've got the rest of the day. How long could it take? All right, thank you, Julia, for being with us so Thank much. you. All right, y'all moving right along. We've got one more demo for you. And this one's quite interesting because we're gonna show you some uh, things that you can do in the extensions view that I think you may not know that you could do. And the reason why I know that you don't know that you can do these things is because I didn't know until about two weeks ago when somebody showed me and they said, there's a bunch of built-in extensions in VS Code and this is how you see them. And so to talk more about that, I wanna welcome Sana 
to the live stream. Hey, Sana, what's up? Hey, Berg, how's it going? Yeah, you're right. There's a lot that you can do with the, the built-in extensions view in VS Code that I don't think a lot of people know of, and we've made some improvements to it. So let me go ahead and share my screen. All right, cool. So this is um, what I have now. This is stable. I haven't updated this yet, so I wanted to show you like a before and after of like what the update actually is. So real quick, what you just said was if you go over to the extensions view and actually like start searching for things, you can actually search for like built-in extensions that come with VS Code. And there's a lot more you could do by just search like pressing at and like seeing all the different ways you can like browse extensions from VS Code in here. But what I wanted to show was um, the kind of the default view of the extensions marketplace in here. What we heard from a lot of users, especially new users, is that sometimes they don't know how to discover the right extensions or they don't know like which one to install because there's just so many. So we wanted to provide them information and more context to make that decision better. So this is like the previous version I'm on of VS Code. And you can see right now, if I search for something like this, like icons, for instance, I get so many and I have to like search through them and I don't really know which one to go into. I have to open up the extension details for each. Then I get information like the installs and like the rating and stuff like that. But now in the latest version of VS Code, so if, for instance, if I go over here now, one thing you can see that we made a change was that if I search for icons again, you A, start to actually see the icon of the extension uh, in like the default, even in the narrow view. So if I resize this, I see a bigger icon, which is great. But even if I have it narrow, I still see something. So that's helpful. I also see the install count and the ratings inside this search view, right? So that's, we wanted to give that information to users so they don't necessarily have to click in. Um, if you hover over um, one of these icons, like one of these extensions as well, you also get more description for each of them. So for instance, if I search for like BitLens, I can like hover over and I get all this awesome information just in the hover itself. And then when I click into the actual extension details page, I can see information like the category of the extension, the links to everything. I can see when it was released and when it was last updated. So that's like really cool information that um, we want to provide, not just in the marketplace, but also available to you in VS Code. Another thing that we added was this thing called the runtime status. So you can actually see uh, when the extensions that you have installed, like when do they activate? So if you go over you know, to your extensions view and search for like the installed extensions that you have, you have all of these installed extensions, but not all of them activate all the time. Um, so you can see which ones have activated, which ones uh, maybe are disabled. So for instance, I've like disabled uh, one of these over here. Uh, I thought I did, all right. But if I like, for instance, if I disable one of these, um, and I can go back and in the hover, I can see that, hey, this is actually disabled and for what reason, right? So we wanna give you more information to make sense of which extensions to install or uninstall or disable and kind of just keep track of your extensions a little bit better. So that's some of the improvements that we've made to the extensions view and experience in VS Code. Awesome. So we've got a couple of questions here. Uh, I went by a couple, I mean a lot. Uh, chat really sort of took off during this one. So I think the one that we really should get to that I think everybody wants to know is, is that Mac OS and do you work at Microsoft and why is that allowed? Uh, yes, this is a Mac. Um, actually, I'd say like a good portion of our team also works on Macs. So we we, we want to cover our bases, right? Like uh, some people prefer the development flow on Windows, some people prefer it on Mac. So it's just like a preference. Uh, we also like do release on all platforms. So like it's easy for us to test on all platforms if we've, you know, our team has has different platforms covered. Uh, yeah, that's a great answer. I personally am myself I'm on Windows, yeah. so I hope that makes you feel better. That <laughs> so it's on Mac. different people on different platforms—they're all good. Visual Studio yeah. works everywhere. All right, exactly. so uh, another question here. Um, <laughs> they're not about the extensions. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Um, Arian's asking, "How can you use Light Mode? How, why, how can you do that?" <laughs> Wait, I I switch between them. I think during the day I like light mode, and then in the night when I do work, I might switch it. I'm like always switching my theme. 
I'm Keep with you. Things. And um, I switch my theme a lot too. And I actually prefer a light theme as well. And I can give you this whole diatribe about how dark themes are not actually better for your eyes, but then the, the chat's going to devolve <laughs> and fall apart. And we don't want that. Uh, again, here's Angelo Longoria saying, anybody looking for a junior front end dev? If so, I think Angelo's up for the job. Hit him up. He's right here in the chat. Angelo, I hope that helps you out. Um, I'm looking for comments about extensions here, but theme name. Oh yeah, what, what's your theme name? Might as well get uh, right let's let's check it out. I think my theme is called Horizon Bright. It's Horizon. very bright. Maybe that should have been like a warning we showed before. Warning light theme. <laughs> right. So they have to like put like a. Oh I'm yeah, so like, yeah. This this live stream is rated L for contains light themes. All right. All right, everybody. We're out of time. Sana, thank you so much for joining us. Of course. Folks, thank you for joining us. Make sure you update your VS code if you haven't done so already. That's what that little notification in the bottom means. And um, any last notes, producers, you want people to know about? Any last comments you want to get in? Now's the time. I will read whatever comes in the chat stream next verbatim. XDDD. -D. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next week for our next live stream. See everybody later. <laughs>